Yeah. Hey, it's Lilius aka Kate Quinlan and this is this week's vlog. So I am kind of full of a cold, which means I'm feeling pretty miserable. So I decided this week I am gonna do a little roundup video where I get to moan. So I am doing five sewing and fashion design tools that I love and five sewing and fashion design tools that I hate or haven't quite worked out how to use properly yet. I'll do the five ones that I love first and get them out of the way. Number one. I did not think that through. Chalk sharpener. If you use Taylor's chalk at all, a chalk sharpener is your best friend. Um, they constantly break and they, they're constantly getting blunt. With these you can sharpen up even the tiniest little bit of your chalk and it's got a beautiful thin point to it. Again, a lovely sharp edge and you can make beautiful thin lines. This is a Dritz one. I don't know, it works. I found it on Amazon. I will link it down below. In fact, I'll link all of these products down below. I'm not affiliated with any of them in any way. I'm not that lucky. But <laughs> um, these are uh, a lifesaver. Number two. Curvy ruler. For all them curves, y'all. So um, I bought this when I first started thinking about possibly doing lingerie um, because it's great for measuring booby cups. Uh, but I actually use it for all sorts, especially things like um, sleeve holes, any, any curves basically. It's a curved ruler and what's great about it as well, especially if you're using it along with like French seam rulers or something, um, you can set it to a curve. You know what the thing of the curve is, you're, you've measured or whatever. So if you're needing to do it on another side or whatever, you leave it and it stays in that curve so you don't have to you can tell if that curves right as well sometimes when you're pattern drafting or whatever something can go a little bit squint or something this double checks for you number three is another ruler i really like rulers i like drafting so i have a lot of them. um this was on my uh list of items i had to buy before starting the hnc textile design course it's by Staples, um, and it's a metric and imperial um, triangularly liney ruler set square thing. Uh, the, the righty angles thing. Measury line. It's all there. It's good. Before I started using this, I didn't check that my lines were squared off. So my patterns were usually a little bit squint. Number four. Um, oh, it's so tangled. Um, this is my thread cutter. It's a clover thread cutter. I think the idea is that you can take them onto airplanes and things where you're not able to have scissors. I can't put that on because it's got a knot. Better force for my life. Yay! Okay. Um, I have it whenever I'm working on the machine. Uh, my old machine didn't used to have one of the little thread cutter things at the side um, and so I ended up buying this for like a fiver or something online and chucked it on a chain so that I always have one around about. It's also fantastic when you're working on oh, hey, hell we go, a dress form or something um, because it means that you're not having to constantly pick up and put down scissors you just know where it is. My number five favourite fashion design and sewing tool is Winifred Aldridge. Uh, she, she's my babe, she's my homegirl, she stays with me wherever I go. Um, I have her metric pattern cotton for women's wear, beach wear and lingerie, oh no sorry, lingerie, beach wear and leisure wear and I've got her men's wear one as well. Somewhere. They tell you how to draft a block, how to edit a block. But I don't want to talk about things I like. I want to talk about things I hate. So, this is my top five things that I either despise and hate with a vengeance, or I just haven't quite worked out yet. Number one. 
chalk wheel. Like, in theory, it's a great thing. You set your, your seam and you thingy the thing and it does it. And when it works, it works. It's great. But there's like two fabrics it works on. It works on calico, which is great. So if you're if you're throwing together twelves or whatever, it's great. It doesn't work on muslin though, so if you need a lighter weight twelve, it, it's not gonna work. Um, yeah, any lightweight fabrics, the little teeth here uh, just kind of chew up that fabric. They don't get grip properly. It just makes a mess, and it's just ugh. the chalk disappears incredibly quickly. I mean, I guess for some things that might be helpful, but I'm not so necessarily throwing something together in one day. Sometimes I'm, you know, I, I, I pattern and I cut my pattern and I lay out my pieces and I'll draft the, 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 the fabric in them. Uh, maybe I'll cut them out that day as well, but maybe I'll have to put it aside and come back to it the next day that I'm working or something. And say the next day I'm wanting to do sketchbook work instead. It means that the next time that I come in, there's basically no chalk marks left. And I'd have to do them all over again. And I don't understand that. That's annoying to me. I do want to try out the fabric pens. They're meant to be good. But they do fade very quickly as well. So maybe I'd hate them too. Also, it was white once, and now it's yellow from the yellow chalk. I mean, it's, it's not the worst thing ever. I do use it, I do use it occasionally. Anything that was the worst thing ever, I've already got rid of, so you know. But I, it just needs to be better. Number four, and again, um, okay, it's an awful rogue, rotary car, okay? They're a really good brand of rotary car. This is no cheap, awful rotary car. This is a good rotary cutter. I spent a lot of money on this rotary cutter, on some huge cutting mats, all the works, blades, everything. And again, when it works, oh, it's a dream and it makes your life so much quicker and oh, it just think, slices through, three layers of fabric, whatever, done, you're done and oh, I hate cutting out fabric and this really helps when it works but I constantly have trouble with it and it's not the blade I can't this this is like a basically a brand new blade that's on it right now basically brand new I put it on the other day to cut out some calico it wouldn't cut out calico It snags on light fabrics, heavy fabrics dull the blade so quickly that it's an incredibly expensive way of cutting out fabric. They're not always precise and exact. And I really have trouble where uh, bits of the blade get dull so quickly that you, you're cutting and it like cuts some bits and then leaves other bits. It's like I don't want a perforated edge. I want it cut. Why? Look, if, if, if this works for you, that's great. Tell me how it works for you, why it works for you, and why it doesn't like me. Number three, again, this is just me. Shop patterns, I hate them. I really, I keep thinking I need to I need to do this, I need to get into this, I need to learn how to do these. And I do, right? I, I do. I need to just set aside a, a week or something where I just do shop bought patterns or something, just so I learn their terminology and the way that they do things. And I'm sure it's immensely helpful for how I'd make my patterns, especially if I'm wanting to have a career doing this and um, going into the industry and stuff. There needs to be industry standards and there needs to be industry terminology. And I understand that. It's me, it's probably not them. It's just, I also never, I very rarely find ones that I think I'd actually like to wear that. Or I actually think that's really great. Just, and the ones I do, I'm like, well, I just drafted it myself. Why would I bother? 
What if you make shop bought patterns? Like not if you make them to like if you buy them and you mix them up. Like, a what was the first one that you made? B do you also have issues understanding what the hell they're talking about? Because like I've studied this and I still have it. <laughs> C what is your advice to make me enjoy making them? Number two Bias binding clips. Again. Okay, a, a lot of seamstresses, a lot of designers, a lot of sewers, craftspeople, whatever, use them. They do work. I, it's not that I don't know how to use them, I, I know how to use them, I've used them before and they do work. I have a whole range of sizes. I can use them. I just, why, why would I bother? Like, okay. The few examples of, of when I would bother. If I really wanted a bias binding made out of a, a really unique material, um, perhaps it's a print or perhaps it's just something that I'm just not going to be able to pick up at a shop that sells bias binding. This is, this is just me. There is nothing wrong with these. These are fine. They work. I just personally would never go, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm gonna make some bias binding. It's just, it's not gonna happen. If I if I have to for a design, if I have to for whatever reason, I will. That's that's just what you do. You have to do it, you do it. I just wouldn't ever choose to. If anything, I'd probably go slightly out of my way to avoid doing it. Number one. This is my number one sewing tool and designing tool. It's a sewing one that I... I hate it. Yeah, yeah, no, that I hate. Yeah. It doesn't work and I hate it. It is a hem and lock machine fit. What is a hem and lock machine fit, I hear you shout. Um, basically, it's attempting to be an overlocker, but as a sewing machine fit. Maybe it's just this one. Maybe you do get good ones out there. If you do, let me know, just in case I suddenly don't have an overlocker anymore. I don't know. But... <sighs> it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It barely cuts the fabric. It chews the fabric. The, the stitching, it's basically just the zigzag stitch that it does on the end. What's the point? What... what? <sighs> Why? I mean, if you didn't have an overlocker, you you don't need to overlock edges. Like, if, if you're making something to sell, if you're making something for production, I highly recommend getting an overlocker. They're fantastic, especially if you're going to be working with stretch fabrics, jerseys, anything like that. They create a fabulous uh, finish to your seams, they look incredibly professional, they can be very neat, they can be incredibly quick to whip something together. It just, it doesn't work. So, that was my five favourite fashion design and sewing tools and my five least favourite fashion design and sewing tools. The ones that I love, the ones that I hate. Uh, most Tools that I absolutely hate, I get rid of. So it was actually quite hard trying to judge through things to find the things that I hate. Um, but it was fun and kind of cathartic and rewarding because I feel so groggy and blah. If you have enjoyed this video, please use the red button down below to subscribe to see more videos like this along with my design process for my upcoming collection. Hey, comment down below and let me know your favourite fashion design and uh, sewing tools. I am an absolute geeky, nerdy, obsessive when it comes to sewing gadgets. I love them. So your favourite gadgets, I want to know. Let me know. Lastly, if you like this video, please give it a little thumbs up to let me know. And I will see you all next week. Love you. Bye.